We would like to welcome everyone on another virtual conference for the 21st century educators entitled Predictors of Research Productivity and its Significance in the Emerging Educational Mechanism, hosted by the Philippine Institute of the 21st Century Educators Incorporated. Our participants are so diverse this afternoon. We have teachers from public schools, private institutions, state universities, and colleges. And in spite of our differences in the distance across among us, we are united with the facts that we are the 21st century educators. Roles of teachers during this pandemic has changed and will never see our educational system the same way again. So in order for students to love learning, especially in this difficult time, we, we do not have just to be teachers, but we have to be mentors who will pave the way ahead. A pleasant day to each and every one. Before we start, let us request everyone to bow our head and put our presence in the holiness of our Creator. Dear Almighty and ever-loving God, we glorify your name. We, you have showered us with so much blessings, and your presence continuously reminds us of your faithfulness and guidance. We humbly ask you to shower our speaker today of the greatest inspiration so that he may be able to share the most of his knowledge and heart on this topic. May we also absorb the invaluable knowledge and experiences to put into practice what we have learned today. We pray that we bless all the committees in charge that may be, we may be able to fulfill their tasks responsibly, that the objectives they have set may all be achieved. Your infinite blessing would mean the success of this webinar. We may be the living witnesses of your love through the enactment of the knowledge acquired through the activity, amen. So good day once again. We are currently viewed in different social media platforms. We are now live via Zoom and also live on YouTube in a POMI channel. So the video of this webinar will also be uploaded on the official Facebook page of Philippine Institute, the 21st Century Educators. A quick reminder for our participants before we start. Your participation is highly encouraged during the open forum in the question and answer segment to follow right after the talk proper of our speaker. You may comment your question on the comment box on YouTube or Zoom, and we will notify you ahead if you're recognized to ask the question. Without uh, further delay, we will, at this juncture, let me introduce to you our guest speaker this afternoon. So our guest speaker is a multi-awarded a multi-award winning Filipino master teacher, speaker, and researcher from Pampanga, Philippines. He's a senior high school master teacher at San Matias National High School, school division office of Pampanga Region 3 in the Department of Education in the Philippines with over two decades of teaching experiences. So he's also a Dangal ng Bayan awardee. The Danal ng Bayan Award from the Philippine government is confirmed to the individual for performance of extraordinary act or public service and consistent demonstration of exemplary ethical behavior on the basis of adherence to the code of conduct and ethical standard for public officials and employees. He's also a recipient of Asian Achiever Award in 2019 Gawad Pat National Award in 2019, Outstanding Research Advocate of the Philippines Award in 2019, the Most Outstanding Teacher Award in 2018, a research advocate. It has been his advocacy to promote the culture of research by developing school-based research management in the region. He has initiated research capacity building for new researchers in the government and private school. His network with other international organizations has become a bridge in hosting international research conferences in Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, and Vietnam. His love for the less fortunate moved him to conduct studies and advocacy for community development in the depressed areas and initiated literary and faith program to select children of Makabebe, Pampanga, Philippines. As an educational leader, he has written contextualized curriculum modules to value education for junior high school and written assessment and evaluation tool for the senior high school in the Department of Education. He holds a bachelor's degree in education, major in religious education, and a master in religious studies as cum laude in Don Bosco's Center of Studies in Paranaque City, a 
and affiliate sa Lucian Pontifical University in Rome, Italy. He took Master's of Arts in Education in De La Salle University, Das Marinas, Cavite. He received the honorary doctorate in Philosophy Institution in Brazil. He is preparing for his final defense in the emerging model of promoting and enhancing research productivity in basic education for his Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Management at the University of the Assumption, San Fernando, Pampanga. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Leonilo Basas Capulso. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Clear. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Okay. So let me share my screen first so that uh, we will be proceeding straight. So once again, I am Mr. Leonilo B. Capulso. I am the CEO and President of BN Books Publication. As mentioned, I am also the Master Teacher of San Matias National High School, Senior High School here in Pampanga. So thank you once again to the Philippine Institute of the 21st Century Educators Incorporated for this virtual conference for the first 21st century. For this afternoon, I am tasked to discuss the predictors of uh, research productivity and its implication in the emerging education educational paradigm otherwise known for us as the next normal so for this afternoon we will be discussing some important concepts and principles of action research and research in general and its implication to uh, research productivity we will also try to research that we can actually use as we continue to conduct research wherever we are in our classroom or even outside the classroom we will also be discussing the the impact of research and action research to teaching and learning particularly de depending on the modalities we are adopting and lastly let's try to explain the predictors of research productivity and its implication to us as teacher researchers so a Latin adage once said, atrox milior dolcesima veritas mindasis, or in English, a bitter truth is better than the sweetest lies. In our life, sometimes it's, it's okay to hear some bitter truth than hearing some sweet lies. Diba, parang ang sakit yata na uh, sabihin sa'yo, ang tamis mong pakinggan, pero yung pala ay isang kasinungalingan mas mainam yung medyo masakit pero this is also true with our relationship with people in our workplace that is why i appreciate people who are very honest and very straightforward when it comes to settling disputes or misunderstanding because that's exactly one of the good ingredient of an, a good organization and how is this related to research i'm handling practical research in senior high school for three years now and I would always ask my students, why are we doing research? What is the importance of doing research? So research is always conducted in order to answer a particular problem. Now for all my students in senior high school, this is now our review. We do research in order to answer a particular problem, to solve a particular uh, problem, no? and eventually sometimes to discover something new. So and here we learn to discover the truth and the truth sometimes may not be pleasing to the ears kaya nga sabi nila kung minsan uh, masakit man ang katotohanan pero yung katotohanan lamang yung magpapalaya sa atin and later on we will see how is this related and importance particularly to the school administrators to those who are actually entrusted to to take care of the educational system so before we discuss what is action research what are its paradigms and uh, how do we predict research in, in school and in our workplace? Let's try to have a short review of what is research in general. Clark and Clark in 2010 defines research as a careful, systematic, and objective investigation conducted to obtain valid facts, draw conclusions, and establish principles regarding an identifiable problem in some field of knowledge. Uh, while I'm discussing this, I want you to think of the problems now you are encountering 
I should deliver instruction, may it be online or may it be distance learning, printed or digital. No, I personally have my concerns. That is why uh, later on we, we will see the importance of conducting research as to the feedback mechanism. Are the feedback being, being fed to us are actually realistic? Are, are they based on, on facts? And from this, as a researcher, we, we, can, we can create something uh, to, to remedy whatever is the problem. Okay, so an action research is actually uh, a coined word of action and research. This is first developed by Kurt Levin in 1944. He is actually, for some, he is attributed as the father of action research. He said that action research is the integration of action or implementing a plan with research, developing understanding of the effectiveness of this implementation. Sa madaling salita, as teachers now, as educators, as, uh, as leaders, we encounter different problems in the workplace or even in our other partners with our stakeholders. So as, as researchers, we try to, to determine what can we do to, to solve that problem? And we do that by doing research so that we will be able to provide a much better solution to the problem. Okay? That is why Kurt Levin once said that no research without action and there is no action without research. So research and action are always connected to one another. So, and later on you would see how the, the Department of Education and even um, other institution, may it be basic or higher education, would appreciate the importance of research. So for MILS, action research is a systematic inquiry done by teachers and other educational experts to gather information about a particular problem, about a particular phenomenon in order to, to better the situation, like educational setting operations, how teachers are teaching, how students are learning. So Stephen Corey defines action research as a process by which practitioners, teachers, or other experts of the field attempt to study their problem scientifically. So we don't jump to conclusion right away. Okay? That's why I said in research, truth is very important. We have to determine who is telling the truth in order for, for us to, to provide um, a good uh, solution to the problem. We should have also a realistic uh, problem to have a good solution to a problem because this will guide correct and evaluate the decisions and actions that we will make without preempting the legal basis of research no uh, that is why research or action research in particular is a cycle okay so you start by planning by planning you actually try to identify the problem ano ba yung problema ano ba yung problema sa estudyante ko ano ba yung problema sa mga co-teacher ko ano yung problema sa aking head anong problema sa sa aming mga stakeholders. And um, this problem will actually help the researcher to implement something, to do an intervention. If the researcher finds a problem or kuminsan siya din yung problema, he can actually remedy by trying to introduce something to better the situation. So this is the acting part. So from planning, you now execute your plan to trial to collect data by collecting all this information to whoever your respondents or your participants are. And after collecting data, you try to observe. Uh, yung ginawa mo bang intervention, yung ginawa mo bang plan na na-implement mo, nas, mas naging mabuti ba yung sitwasyon? That is, does it improve the situation? So then you try to share, you try to report. Okay, That is why later on, research is actually... Uh, research productivity is, is measured not only by the research we conducted, but how are we supposed to disseminate and, uh, and share the, the information that we had. And of course, reflect. Uh, yung ginawa mo bang intervention na mas napabuti yung sitwasyon o lalong lumala? In that case, that will bring you to, to the next uh, step. No, babalik ka dun sa planning stage. Kapag hindi maganda yung naging resulta, and then you try to you try to plan out what are other alternatives in order to better the situation. So, there, ano lang yan? Cycle lang yan. Actually, action research and even other applied research follow the same scenario. So, why do we do research or why do we do action research according to, to, to Creswell? No? Creswell is one of the renowned 
uh, author when it comes to research, may it be quantitative or qualitative research. According to Creswell, we do research or action research in order to encourage change in school. For example now, no, from a face-to-face -face modality, we used to, to teach our student online. We could easily react and uh, coordinate with our students. We could easily uh, assess what are the problems. Now, because of COVID-19, there were some challenges that sometimes uh, there is the difficulty trying to give some feedback mechanism to our students. So that is where it is understanding. That is why here, again, communication is very important. It fostered democratic approach to education. As researchers, one of the important contribution that we do are the knowledge and the discoveries that we actually discover in doing research. Okay, so all this discovery that could actually improve the educational system will be our contribution to the world. Empowers individual to project collaboration. By research, we are also connected to other researchers in the field and even in the international arena, no other field of research. Position teachers and educators as learners who seek to narrow the gap between practice and their vision of education. So bilang mga guru, bilang mga educators, mayroon tayong mga gustong gawin sa klase natin. But because of, of this limitation, sometimes we are, we are actually challenged. We are actually limited. Now, by doing research, that limitation is being bridged by what we can do. Okay? So personally, for example, now I have a hard time contacting to my students or vice versa. So I can make some mechanism in order to bridge the gap. Okay? So as long as the communication is open, as long as honesty is there. So uh, that's exactly the purpose of doing research. So encourage educators to reflect on their practices. For example, you've been doing a particular practice and you think uh, the performance, the competencies you are expecting are, are very far from the expectation. So that actually calls you to reflect. So what else I can do? As, as a teacher, promotes a process of testing new ideas. So there might be new ways of, uh, of producing output from students. So I was sharing with some experts in, in, the, in the world no? La, last night with uh, people from, from Greece, people from India, people from Saudi Arabia about how do they do educational practices. Like how do they assist students in an online modality? Do they still give quizzes that the the quiz that we used to give, 10 quizzes, 20 quizzes, or 20 items. While other schools would only, for example, they're very creative because studies said that pure online or online modality could sometimes be saturating and not sustainable. So teachers are very creative by, for example, asking students to produce a particular output that can present in one minute or at least draw or create a video and then just send it to the teacher. So we are actually giving our students a little uh, time to, to do the, the expected output as long as uh, we are not compromising the competency. So we should not be very strict by this time uh, as long as we are able to deliver to students the quality education we are expected to, to give. So now, what is action research in the Philippine K-12 education and even in higher education? So... The Basic Education Act of, 20, of, of 2001, also known as Republic Act 9155, it says that all educational reforms in, in the central office, in the regional office, down to the school's division office, and even to the school level, should be based from research. That is why all decisions should be based on research. So bago kayo gumawa ng isang judgment about a particular person, we, we see to it that we are actually having the two sides of the coin, no, without only listening to one side. Okay? Because that will help us give a better opportunity to, to be fair. Okay? So, Deped Order 39 Series of 2006, also known as the Basic Research Agenda, would try to identify the possible themes and topics that teachers can, can do that will cater to the different stakeholders of education. In Region 3, for example, we have Regional Memorandum 57, series of 2018, that tries to adopt the basic education research agenda. And actually, it has already been amended because of some enhancement. Having said that, we know therefore that uh, the basic education research agenda were all of the research initiative, which is actually 
has its counterpart with higher education. The research agenda for higher education tries to provide guidance to schools or school division offices and even to the school leaders in conducting educational research. How supposed to be, how should research be conducted by teachers and eventually as teachers to students? How are we supposed to encourage students to do research based on our experience? So sometimes it's very hard to, to teach research to students if we ourselves have not conducted research ourselves. No? So utilization of research results to inform the department's planning, policy, and program development. That is why even the K-12 education curriculum is a product of research. No? If you try to go the rationale why we adapted K-12, you would realize that it is a byproduct of research. No? We see how other countries have been adapting K-12 education and then compare it to our old curriculum. That actually brings to the realization that we could actually adapt okay, um, the K-12 education. Of course, there were some other sides who would try to, to, to question okay, because um, there, there would always be some points for clarification. Now, um, how are action research, for that matter, respond to the educational stakeholders? Deped Order 39, Series of 2016, identify four important themes. But I think this is not only true to basic education. This is also true to higher education. May it be private or government higher education. So how do we conduct research or which research are we supposed to, con to conduct? So the basic education research agenda identified four themes that is actually tantamount or respond to the four stakeholders of education teaching and learning, child protection, human resource and development and governance. So ito yung apat na, na, na tema na pwede nating pagkuhanan ng ating mga gagawing research topics. Actually, in a while, I'll be showing you what are the possible topics before we proceed to how do we produce research. Okay? So aside from the four themes, there are also four, uh, three cross-cutting themes like Gender and Development, Disaster Risk Reduction Management, and Inclusive Education. So sa madaling salita, there are seven themes that a teacher-researcher could adapt in conducting research inside and outside the classroom. Okay, so these four themes actually, as mentioned, for example, the teaching and learning process responds to the students' and teachers' needs. So dito mo gagawin yung mga research na may kinalaman sa pangangailangan ng estudyante at ng guru. On child protection policy, these research topics respond to the needs of the students alone. On human resource and development, responds to the needs of teaching and non-teaching staff. Governance, however, focus on administration and stakeholder engagement. Um, under teaching and learning, a researcher could look into five sub-themes in teaching and learning. Like instruction, you can make a, a research on instruction. On like, like now, you, you could look into the modality, of which is the more effective modality. What are the challenges encountered in this modality? Curriculum, um, we, we now are adapting the, the MELC, no? the, the modified uh, competencies of students. We can look into that, the kind of learners that we have. What are the problems encountered by learners? How do we assess students' competencies and learning outcomes? Okay. Uh, now, uh, because we, we only have one hour, on your screen, you could see what are the possible topics under theme number one. So roughly, you could have research on a student ach achievement, competencies, values, behaviors, career pathing, personality traits, flexible learning options, uh, school home linkages, lalong lalo na ngayong uh, kailangan natin ng more collaboration with, with other stakeholders. No, may it be in school or the, the community. Under theme number two, child protection, uh, studies can be conducted in the area of prevalence, child protection, teenage pregnancy, bullying, drugs, child labor, and gambling. So, kung napansin niyo siguro sa mga nakaraang report sa television, no, yung particularly that school who actually had an online class, no, bigla na lang may naghubad na mga kasama dun sa group, and then they realized they are not basically part of the school, no, so. How, how can we prevent, how can we protect our, our students from possible data, data violations? That is why as we use also online platforms, we also see to it that our, the, 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 the rights 
of our students are also protected and also bullying no in in our online mechanism bullying is now more on cyber bullying so we can also look into that on human resource and development there are three sub themes you can look into teaching and non teaching qualification and hiring uh, if you try to open facebook now there were a lot of questions about what will happen if you have passed already uh, RQA, what will be the next step, what will be the online mechanism and everything. Career development, what will happen to teachers? Uh, there was a moratorium on uh, teachers who want to be uh, pr uh, promoted from uh, teacher three to master teacher, so on and so forth. The, de the department already have issued a moratorium for that, if I'm not mistaken, and other, uh, and other concerns. Employees' welfare, for example, as much as we try to protect the welfare of the students, are, are the welfare of teachers also protected? For example, teachers sometimes because of need are required to go to school. Halimbawa, biglang nagka-COVID si teacher sa hindi niya sinasadya. Sasagutin ba ng school yung mga gagastusin ng teacher? My wife is an occupational health physician. She, she actually helps employees to, to see to it that they are healthy and they are fit to work. And sometimes uh, she would be the one or more often she will be the one to tell the, 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 the administration if this particular worker or employee is fit to work. That is why one time in one of our conversations, she asked me, kayong mga guru, kapag nagkasakit kayo, uh, ano yung sagot ng eskwelahan? Ano yung sagot ng departamento? I, I cannot comment much because all the most that I know of is the, the medical examination that we have at the beginning or towards summertime. But in between that, I, I, I don't know that the school is providing us like what the private schools or private organizations are, are giving. Although we have uh, field health and other things, but that's beyond the, the depth ed or the school's um, help to us. No, that's because we are paying to field health. But just the same, these are the mechanisms. That is why the schools, no, school leaders would see to it that when teachers are going to school, health protocols are properly or to, to, to be free from these possible consequences. So under human resource and development is teaching and non-teaching, uh, qualification and hiring, career development, employees' welfare, gender and development. So dito na papasok yung gender and development. So halimbawa sa career development, mapapansin nyo na um, studies, no, as a researcher, we know that online teaching is saturating. It's not sustainable. Kuminsan nakakadrain. Okay? That is why uh, the school have their own mechanism in order to sustain the the health of, of their students, uh, of, of the teachers, so and, and other uh, um, mental health issues for that matter. Under governance, um, which are normally uh, fit for, for the principals, for the head teachers, and for, for other non-teaching personnel, they can conduct research on the area of planning, on finance, program management, transparency and accountability, customer satisfaction, disaster reduction management. Dito papasok. So ngayon na nasa signal number three yung Pampanga, gamit na gamit natin yung DRR. That is why the, the school division office DRR ng, ng Pampanga in collaboration with other agency uh, are having their radar to see to it that schools are properly monitored and also to, to see to it that employees are secured. Okay. Now, uh, having said that, let's proceed to, to the second part of our discussion, which is research productivity. Why do we need to produce research? In higher education, there are three important, I normally call it the trident of, of education, that is instruction, research, and community extension. And research is one of the important elements of a particular institution if an institution wants to to have, for example, a university status, an autonomous status. But in basic education, we know that research productivity is important because according to what we have mentioned earlier, no, um, the a Particular Republic Act and the Deped Order says that all reforms that will be conducted by the school should be a byproduct of research, should be based on research. So all decisions should be research-based. That's exactly why when a particular school adopted a particular modality, it's supposed to be based from research. For example, my school in San Machas, majority of our modality is printed module. So malinaw yun, printed module. Students will try to give that, uh, the, the school will provide them the modules, the printed modules, and then they will return. 
although out of the generosity of the school and the teachers, there are other mechanisms for the feedback mechanism. So students could ask at, uh, the teacher or the school or through their advisor about certain clarification. And then the advisor would actually tell the, 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 the teacher concerned about this concern so that there would be proper channeling of information so that the issue can be properly addressed too. Okay? Because if the proper channeling is not observed, I think there will be some breach of communication. And uh, there might be also uh, possible uh, problems eventually in, in the organization. So what is uh, research productivity? A simple uh, definition by, by Abramo and Angelo, research productivity pertains to the number of publication per researcher. And other definitions sometimes not only refer to the number of research produced, but sometimes the number of research being disseminated. Okay, in the study that I conducted, the research productivity were actually gauged on, uh, on different category. For example, um, research being submitted uh, but not approved. Research which is approved, implemented or a full-blown research, that is the research which were actually implemented and accepted by the judge. It's only then you have a full-blown prod uh, research productivity. Now, uh, why do we need research productivity? But to, to understand research productivity, you have first to understand what is culture or what is the importance of research culture. You cannot have a research productive organization if you don't have a good research culture, okay? Teresa Marchant of Hanover Research in 2014 defines a culture as a system of widely shared and strongly held values. Ito yung mga pinanghahawakang mga pagpapahalaga ng isang organisasyon. So these are your values. Apply that to research. Research culture pertains to the structure that gives research behavior significance and allows to understand and evaluate research activity. Kanina, sabi natin, all innovations in school supposed to be based from and on research. Therefore, kapag ako ay uh, school leader, lahat ng mga decision na gawin, especially when it comes to innovation and reform, should be based from research, from studies. So, but to do that, you should have a good research culture. Okay, uh, kapag ang isang leader ng eskwelahan o ng institusyon ay mayroong malawak na kultura ng research, alam niya na lahat ng gagawin niya ay nakabasay, nakabatay sa research. No? So, <clears throat> that's according to Cheetham of the University of Western Sydney. A culture of research provides a supportive context in which research is uniformly expected, discussed, produced, and valued. So, pag sinabi mong mayroon kaming magandang research culture, ibig sabihin sa inyong eskwelahan, research is actually expected by all from teacher master teacher head teacher principal up to the higher up it is being discussed in in your lack session in your meetings produced and valued tanong in your school all the reforms conducted by your leader how many percent of them were actually based from research or regardless of who conducted the research if most of them are actually based from studies, then you could say that your school actually have a good research culture. Now, you would realize that a good research culture is tantamount to having a good chances of research productivity. Okay. According to the study I have conducted, particularly um, the study of Bland et al., and Sulabo of the University of the Philippines. They identified four uh, predictors of research productivity. And according to Bland et al., actually, uh, this group has the, the most, shall I say, comprehensive framework on research productivity. It identified three predictors or uh, factors of research productivity. One is individual characteristic. Second is institutional characteristic. And three, leadership characteristic. But on my end, I added another uh, characteristic adapted from the study of Sulabo from the University of the Philippines. It says that uh, self-efficacy is also a predictor for research productivity. So that is why we were able to have four 
uh, predictors of research productivity, other study also could actually add other elements. As for our discussion, we limited only to four. So going to our discussion, uh, I will not elaborate so much. Under individual characteristics, uh, Bland et al. identify socialization, motivation, content knowledge, basic and advanced research skills, simultaneous projects, orientation, and uh, autonomy and work habits. In other words, uh, teachers and researchers who possess these individual characteristics are more likely to produce research. Motivation. Kapag based on, on my interview, actually, in one of my participants, he said that despite of the, the, the challenges they encounter, which I actually later on will identify, what actually pushed them to produce research is their motivation. They are motivated to conduct research, which is an intrinsic motivation. Basic and advanced research skills. Others who were asked, bakit uh, hindi kayo nakakagawa ng research? Kasi nga, hindi namin alam. No? We have a hard time doing statistics and data analysis. Orientation. Because to, uh, teachers or researchers were actually oriented. Uh, they, they would rather do these things than doing research. Uh, content knowledge. They don't know the basic about research. Okay? Uh, another, uh, autonomy and commitment has academic freedom uh, because they, they, they are not given that freedom to conduct a particular study. They rather not. No? But if, um, if uh, researchers and teachers are given this responsibility and, and right, then more chances that they will conduct research and produce study. Work habits. It says, as established productive scholarly habits. If I am used to creating something for, for, for the school, for the world, for example, in my case, it's, it's been my advocacy to, to, uh, to pr pr promote research productivity not only in the region, but even in the international arena. So that, that actually pushes me to conduct research. Another uh, indicator of research productivity under Blunt et al. is in, uh, institutional characteristic. What are these institutional characteristics? One, a clear coordinating goals, uh, research emphasis, culture, positive group climate. Kanina nabanggit ko no, earlier that culture is very important in order for you to produce research. Kapag ang isang institution ay may pagmamahal, pagpapahalaga sa, sa, sa research, more chances that they will produce research, as mentioned in this study. No? That is why a positive research culture is an indicator of research productivity. What else? Positive group climate. Kapag ang kasama mo ay mahilig din gumawa ng research, na, nadadala ka din gumawa. No? So kapag ang mga kasama mo ay ayaw gumawa ng research, for example, in my experience, I've been promoting research productivity in my area for three years now, uh, may mga gumawa na din, but still, uh, I, I hope more will, will continue to, to do research. No? What else? Communication professional network. Uh, sometimes, there, the difficulty of conducting research because you, you have limited resources and network. But by conducting research, you are actually connected to different researchers, not only in the Philippines, but in other countries. Now, for those who are new members of the group we just created, no, the Teacher Education Academy, for example, um, the, the members there, like Attorney Duell from, uh, from, uh, from Quezon Province could attest that, that research could indeed connect you to, to people around the world. Uh, what else? Um, here, which is actually very true, work time. When I was interviewing my, my participants from the, the, the region, they said that they don't have enough time to conduct research because they are actually fully loaded. They have many tasks to do. No, mamaya lalabas yan dun sa ating uh, interview. Uh, size, experience, and expertise. No, they, they lack purpose to do it. Rewards. In one of the literature I have read, in one uh, institution outside the country, they are receiving from $700 to $3,000 as an incentive of conducting research. Uh, in, in other school, for example, in Pampanga, I heard uh, a particular professor who was actually awarded 40000 In other universities, they were given 70000 or up, depending on the impact factor of the research they have produced. Also, uh, what else? The, the communication, decentralized organization are, 
uh, assertive participative governance later on that's connected to to leadership which i'm actually bringing you to to the last uh from bland no for bland leadership is also a research uh element in conducting research uh, and it says that if the leader is a research scholar that means highly regarded as scholars serve as sponsor mentor and peer model for research more chances that the school can produce research. Research-oriented. Uh, one of the interviews that I conducted, it says, uh, kaya, uh, the, the reason why the, the school or the teacher was not able to produce because the leader doesn't produce, doesn't support research because the leader has other priorities. So if the school leader has a research orientation, more likely that the, the, the teachers, the researchers will produce research, which is true to one of my participants. He said that my, my principal would even try to find ways to, to find uh, uh, financing, you know? find uh, funding aside from birth and uh, the school educational fund, which is not enough sometimes because it is allocated to other concerns sometimes. What else? Uh, participative leadership. Uh, that is why I would even, uh, I'd been handling 20 schools in, in Pampanga on particularly in secondary in doing research productivity and they would, I would normally encourage principal to do collaborate collaboration with with their teachers in conducting research no teachers can be deputized by the principal to conduct research on a particular topic and they can do that okay and lastly okay uh, another research productivity indicator according to Sulabo and the other authors is self efficacy it says self-efficacy is an individual assessment of their own confidence associated with their ability to conduct research activities from planning the research to publishing it. You know, the trust that a task will be completed successfully according to Gardas, Prim, uh, Primiana, and Effendi of 2017. Actually, uh, the study of um, Sulabo et al. from UP actually emphasize also the importance of self-efficacy. Sa madaling salita, kapag gusto mo yung ginagawa kahit wala masyadong incentive, kahit maraming naninira sa'yo, kahit hindi ka supportive ng leader mo, kapag gusto mong gumawa ng research, kapag determinado ka, kapag motivated ka, magagawa at magagawa mo yung research. So that's self-efficacy. Okay, so now, um, I'm nearing to the last part of my screen. I'm sharing you, this is not yet for publication, my initial paradigm on research productivity. So what I actually did was I, I do an, an online um, survey on the four indicators that I mentioned to you, individual, institutional leadership, and self-efficacy. And then I do a, a, an interview with productive uh, researchers, and I do a mixed method using joint display analysis. So... And I was able to have, uh, if you can, the, the, the following themes. No? The one outside the triangle are actually the themes. No? The one on top are actually the best practices that I get from, from my interview. And the one on the lower left are their challenges. And the one in the lower right are their coping mechanism. And using my joint display analysis, I was able to develop my unified themes. So I could say that the predictors for research productivity or the quality assurance framework later on as I will develop this. This is an ongoing study for your information. Is getting into graduate studies. In one of that interview, students would say that uh, because of that lack of research uh, skills, they were able to, to enroll in graduate school where they learned basic skills about, um, about research. And it is um, very helpful for them because the, it, it actually... Uh, bridge the gap between their lack of knowledge on basic skills and on conducting research. Another is leaders, uh, research-focused leadership and integral support. Anong sinasabi ko dito? Sab one, one of the problems that they encounter is the lack of leadership support. So what I'm proposing here is leaders should not only be leaders. They're supposed to be research-focused leaders. So leaders are supposed to be uh, focused on, on research, okay? Uh, next, uh, lifelong education is a personal desire, uh, meaning that um, all teachers or researchers should actually uh, have that desire to, to continue to educate themselves. And it's supposed to be a desire coming from within. 
equitable reward mechanism uh the 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 mechanism of this kind of mechanism pertains to what kind of incentive uh, is being provided to the researchers intrinsic passion for research actually uh, later on you would realize in in my modified uh, paradigm that it's very important it's actually becoming the the first part no um just to show you uh these are the best practices identified in that framework i will not elaborate that because i already explained that to you because of the scarcity of time so these are the best practices mentioned by uh, by the teachers. And these are the challenges, the so scarcity of time, playing multiple roles, lack of technical expertise, lack of leadership support, lack of encouragement, slow feedback mechanism, and negative attitude among colleagues. So these are the identified challenges. And the uh, identified coping mechanism, what they do with that problem? So they try to set priorities, they try to focus, constant self-enhancement, fund sourcing, collaboration with others, consistent feedback mechanism and building rapport and that brings me to my uh, enhanced framework again this is not yet final so again it's it seems that the most important predictor is the intrinsic passion of research kapag ang isang researcher ay gusto niya yung research gusto niyang ginagawa niya more chances that the person is able to conduct research and then ongoing graduate study Okay, because we, con we, we are expected to conduct in our university, for example, we are expected to conduct a research per subject that we take. Then our leaders are supposed to be oriented to research. And if they are oriented to, to research, more chances that they will be supporting us integrally in all aspects, not only in research. And then lifelong education is a personal desire. Our desire to continue to learn. Okay, and research is that uh, opportunity to learn that would also help us produce research. And lastly, equitable reward mechanism. Not necessarily monetary, sometimes a simple recognition or for in other university, for example, they are given a promotion, they are deloaded, so on and so forth. So for me, these are the predictors of research productivity. And let me end by saying, in doing research and in all educational endeavors that we do, let me quote what St. Francis said. Start by doing what's necessary. So dun muna tayo, ano ba talaga yung kailangan? Like in our modalities, in, in the needs, for example, in, in teaching now research and understanding culture, politics, and society, there are some issues as to the feedback mechanism. So let's try to settle that. Let's try to communicate what really seems to be the problem. Let's talk about that properly, okay? So that we can provide the proper uh, answer so that it, we, we can still provide the, the quality and responsive education we're expected to do. And then, do what is possible. So, pag alam mo na kung ano yung priority mo, simulan mo sa mga kaya mo nang gawin. Okay? And uh, that's actually the, the implementation of the plan. And lastly, you would realize that you are doing the impossible. Yung dati na akala mo impossible, ay kaya naman palang gawin. So that's how we do research, okay? So we try to identify what's necessary, what seems to be the problem, and then we try to respond to the problem, okay, by, by using this data and proper analysis of the data. And we have to remember that research is important and we do research in order to, to solve a problem. We are doing research to answer a question. We are doing research to discover something new to help in the field of education and to enhance and improve society okay as a teacher as a researcher so thank you very much for that um for for your time so once again i am leonie lubasas capulso from bn books publication your president and i have uh, provided you my number and my email address if you have some clarification you can just contact me and in in all research initiative and other collaboration in the future so once again Thank you very much and good afternoon. Sir. Thank you so much, Sir Capolso. It is a, you, indeed you, a sir. very inspiring uh, talk. Thank you, thank you, sir. Oh, we really learned a lot this afternoon and we hope next time we, we will have a longer time to discuss because we understand that we have a very limited uh, yes, sir. time today. But we have seen that your topic is really very interesting and it's full of substance. Yes, yes, sir. So we will now proceed on the open forum or the question and answer program.
there is somebody assigned our committee to select questions to be asked in this segment. We would like to encourage everyone to raise relevant questions on this topic presented this afternoon. So we have allocated one hour and a half for, on this webinar. So we'll try to cater questions as many as we can. When raising your questions, kindly introduce yourself in the name of the institution you're affiliated with. Thank you. So, sir. yes, uh, is there somebody interested to ask a question? So first, I, I would like to ask a question uh, privately uh, sent here on our Zoom account. So sir, what is or what are the challenges for researchers during this pandemic, because we understand that you know things have changed during this pandemic. So we would like to ask, what are the challenges, or if there are you know problems or you know even opportunities that we see during this pandemic? Uh, thank you for for that question, sir. Actually, uh, just for 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 sharing, I conducted my study initially through a survey questionnaire. But because of the pandemic, I have to shift my survey into online mechanism. So I actually drafted a Google uh, form in order to, to gather my data. But because there is that lack of face-to-face -face interaction, sometimes there are possibility of outliers and the, you, you cannot totally give the proper orientation as to uh, answering the, 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 the questioners properly. But uh, sometimes it's also a challenge because, for example, the second part of my study where I do um, an online interview, um, everybody is actually uh, trying to, to rush in, in everything that we do, that, that they do. But then um, conducting an online interview would actually be separated by the screen. But just the same, no, the, the, the study was able to be conducted. Only that... The, the personal touch was missing, no? That 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 part of uh, of conducting study, but I think personally it will not hinder us from conducting research. Of course, it's another story in teaching research to students. When uh, I, I used to teach for three years, a uh, practical research to to our students, and as part of their output, I normally have the school-based research conference where students have to present their output per group. But because of pandemic, they are not allowed to see each other personally. And it's hard for senior high school to conduct research individually. So I think that is where the problem lies, sir. Sir, I cannot hear you. I think you are muted. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Okay. The second Thank part you, of his question, sir. Yes, uh, we understand there are a lot of problems we face. Uh, he would like also to ask, are there opportunities also that uh, we can see during this time? Uh, speaking of opportunity, I think I have to, to take it again from my personal perspective. Because we, we have a limited uh, opportunity to, to meet one another, the, the possibility of doing uh, collaboration from the international partners became very, very feasible. Uh, in our case, I, I was able to have uh, research partners from different parts of the world. I have partners from Pakistan, I have partners from Nepal, I have partners from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from Greece, from Turkey. So collaboration now actually becomes very possible because of of this pandemic no so for us researchers we are not limited by by space and time because of this so i think that is the opportunity that that came along with that and because of that we we are actually also were able to enhance our our skills by asking them how how we did it in their own way so the we we in business we call it leveraging our research skills so it actually a blessing in disguise for us Sorry. Okay, sorry. Thank you so much for the response. So one of our participants asked, uh, his name is Charles Isla. Thank you, Sir Caposo. I have learned a lot. What are your what are your tips to become outstanding researcher? Okay. Uh, thank you, Sir Charles. Actually, to become an outstanding researcher is a bonus. Um, again, personally, those challenges that were mentioned, majority of them actually were, were personally experienced by myself also. Although there were some also other positive points in, in the other side of the story. But um, because of my determination 
to to conduct research uh, i was able to 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 inspire others no in in doing research um again i have to to tell the group that i am a research coordinator of a particular cluster in schools division office in pampanga i'm handling 20 schools i actually do uh, capacity building to this uh to these schools and even do school to school or school based research capacity building and even encouraging principals to do research and um, if you happen to visit my video my youtube channel no you can see there uh, sir do uh, tv you can go to my youtube channel you will see there actually a clip which was created by deped region 3 how i become an outstanding uh, teacher of region 3 and most of them were what i did with research so uh, because of that motivation to share the passion, no, I try to capacitate eventually not only people in Region 3, but even now we, we, we've been doing capacity building in, in other countries. So, di ba sabi natin, kapag mahal mo yung ginagawa mo, uh, hindi mo nakikita yung mga problema, they become actually opportunities. And being recognized as an outstanding researcher becomes a bonus. But if you try to go back to my framework from the end, no? It becomes also very inspiring to be recognized as it came out to my framework that reward mechanism is actually a predictor of research productivity. But again, you should not start from there. No, a reward mechanism should only be a byproduct of your intrinsic motivation. Sure. Okay, thank you so much, sir. That is a very inspiring answer. And I hope that you know many participants uh, attending this afternoon will be encouraged to pursue uh, research and to conduct more studies. So we have another question, sir, from Sir Patrick Take of Ancheta. So he would like to ask, sir, what is the difference between action research done quali qualitatively and those done quantitatively? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, one of the advocacy now I am, I am doing is to promote action research qualitatively. In our division particularly, I could say that 98% of action research are done quantitatively. So I, I was affiliated with uh, Asian Qualitative Research Association in uh, before the founding president was uh, uh, Dr. Wambaleka, who happens now to be in Africa. And uh, in his book, he actually advocated the beauty of conducting qualitative research. And he has a book for teachers that will actually uh, guide teachers in conducting uh, qualitative action research. Uh, the difference is most of the action research conducted quantitatively is done using uh, experimental research or quasi-experimental research. Whereas in qualitative research, you can do that actually using only uh, uh, interviews okay, or even uh, other research methodology which were identified, ethnography, so on and so forth. So uh, action research, if you try to go back to the framework, you, you start with a problem. So kapag ako halimbawa, if I have a problem with my students or with my co-teachers, my, my pretest, okay, my would be an interview. So alamin ko muna kung ano yung problema ng mga estudyante ko by you, you can do it through a focus group discussion, you can do it through an interview, and then just this in following the format, you do intervention as a teacher. And then after that, instead of doing uh, of giving questionnaire, you you again interview them. Okay, and how how do you analyze you analyze by doing thematic analysis okay in my case for example i do joint display analysis um in in quantitative you do using for example spss or use excel to do your data analysis but basic education research agenda equally appreciate these two kinds of research okay actually it promotes quantitative research qualitative research and even mixed method research so personally for me a teacher in private or in public school can, or even in higher education can conduct action research quantitatively, qualitatively, or even using mixed methods, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. And also, uh, sir, Patrick and Chetta for your question. I have another question, sir, from Sir Jonard Carillon. Okay, sir. Uh, and I would like to read his uh, 
question, sir. Can you provide some advice about my focus on research? It can be an issue, those research focusing on the leadership styles of barangay captains para po kasing mag Para po kasing makakaroon ng issue regarding this. This is my problem as of okay. now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I think we try to 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 recall uh, the context of research ethics um, para magiging guidance natin. In in school, for example, our ethical standard would normally do this. Uh, we normally do this. Kapag ako ay teacher three, ang gagawin kong research ay yun lang para sa teacher 1 to 3 at sa mga estudyante ko, I, I normally am not encouraged to do research whose respondents are higher than my designation. So we are discouraged to, but I'm not saying that it's not allowed, no? We are discouraged to conduct research whose our participants are master teachers, our principals, or even superintendents, except if it is a graduate study. Now, um, however, as teacher, you can actually dip, be deputized by your principal. Halimba, I normally tell this to the principal. Halimbawa, uh, gusto malaman ng principal yung uh, sitwasyon ng iba't ibang organization o ng uh, ibang mga, mga projects in school. So a particular teacher can be deputized by the principal to do that. Now, if my study is on leadership of barangay captain, um, your concern now is your your respondents are barangay captain. When you ask permission to conduct research, you normally go to the higher up. Okay, so sino ba yung mas mataas sa barangay captain? Normally yung mayor. So that's a courtesy also. That's also research ethics. Maliba na lang kapag ito ay graduate study, even it's a graduate study, no? you, you still have to ask permission from the pe people who are actually uh, under the jurisdiction of your research um, uh, participants. So wala naman sir problema yung kung gusto mong aralin yung mga leadership styles ng, ng, mga, ng mga barangay captain. Basta malinaw lang dun sa yung permission to conduct study why you're doing that. And normally if you try to go back to our initial discussion, we do research to answer a question, to solve a problem, and to discover something new. Malay mo, halimbawa, um, ako naman on the positive side, halimbawa nakita ko, bakit ba itong mga barangay captain namin ang sisipag? Yung iba, hindi. Gusto kong malaman kung bakit. So it's more on the appreciative inquiry approach yung gamit ko. So I will conduct research on the leadership styles of barangay captain not to put them down but to raise them up. Okay? So wala naman issue sir. Actually you could just proceed as long as you follow the proper protocol of conducting research study. Okay, sir. Thank you for that answer. Okay, sir. We have a question here from our webinar director, Mr. Wiki Kabinko. He would like to ask, sir, how do you differentiate a good research from a bad research? Okay. Um, I think when you differentiate a good from a bad research, it, uh, it entails... Uh, the kind of norm you are, are using. So how do you, what actually your norm of determining if a research or good or bad? Uh, a research is bad for me if you don't follow the standards of research. Like for example, you violated the research ethics, then that's a bad research. Kahit gaano kaganda ng research study mo, kung hindi mo nasunod yung protocol, halimbawa, yung confidentiality, proper caring of information, uh, walang saysay yung magandang research na ginawa mo. Or halimbawa naman, on the contrary, uh, ang, ang study mo, negative yung effect. Always remember that research study is not always yielding positive effect. If the study is actually, uh, halimbawa, kapag ang study ko lumabas ay negative, tapos para hindi lang sumama yung loob nila, ginawa kong positive. That's a bad research. So, a good research, regardless of its outcome, positive or negative, as long as a researcher follow the standards of research uh, procedure, then it is a good research for me. Okay, so it regardless if it is yielding positive or negative effect. Sorry. Okay, sir. 
Um, thank you, sir. We have another question. I think this will be the last question that we will cater because we don't have uh, enough time. Uh, marami pa sana ang questions. Pero gusto niyang itanong, sir. I hold on. Nasa na. Na-explain niyo po kanina yung action research is finding a solution. So, in every title of the student research, dapat po pala masundan po natin para malaman natin kung successful nga ba yung research na ginawa na research, sir. This question is from Sir Mel and Ciso. Uh, sir, what exactly is the question? Uh, yung tanong niya ay... Dapat po ba pala masundan po natin para malaman natin kung successful nga ba yung research na ginawa ng ating student? Ah okay. Uh, I I think he is talking about the research framework, the research cycle. The research cycle is um uh, parang framework lang siya. Madali ang framework na dapat you start with the planning, then you try to uh, uh, execute and then you you evaluate and then you disseminate so on like that. Um kailangan mo siyang sundan. I, I'll make it simple ganito. When it comes to student hindi kasi action research yung ginagawa ng estudyante or hindi lahat ng estudyante ay action research yung ginagawa. Unless na lang, as a research teacher, you want your students to do action research. No? Um, your, your students' research could sometimes be an ordinary assessment or evaluation research. Halimbawa, gusto ko lang malaman kung ano yung, um, yung trend ng mga estudyante when it comes to uh, gusto nilang panuorin na telenovela yun ba ay uh, Tagalog or Korean? That's not an action research. But then again, we, we, what we actually follow is the important research procedure. Okay? So as long as nasusundan niyo yung procedure, okay, now uh, generally we've been following an MRAD format, Introduction, Methods, Research, and Discussion. And uh, that four part, no? Uh, unlike in other, and which is actually also followed by the BERA, the Basic Education Research Agenda is also following the MRAD format. Now we have the seventh uh, edition also of uh, American Psychological Association Citation. In, um, as long as we are following that, we, we, we are doing the right uh, thing in research. Again, uh, if the teacher decides to have the students do an action research, it is... Uh, an agreement between the student and the teacher, okay? But action research is also an option to the teacher. Again, basic education research agenda does not only oblige teachers to do action research. Applied research is another option, okay? So a teacher could do applied research or an action research. And just like the method, he can use quantitative, qualitative, or a mixed method. Sir? Okay, sir. Thank you so much. So we really learned a lot this afternoon and we are receiving uh, some of the positive feedbacks here in our chat group. I would like to read some um, from Sir Cyril de la Fuente at the University of Antique. My salute to you, my friend, Dr. Doy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sai. And also... Um, we have also a comment from from uh, Mom Ellen Gray Soberano. I like the way these predictors of research productivity are cited. Hope we can avail a copy of your presentation. Thank you so much in advance, sir. Okay, okay, sir. And also, we would like to shout, uh, uh, We would like to greet our participants uh, watching. From all the way from Australia, so we have Mamlin Divine, and we have also uh, Sir Derek Hernandez watching from Vegan City. Okay. And also uh, a comment from Nam Novalin Matuan. Thank you so much, Sir Leonilo. Very informative. And also a comment from Sir Junai Carion. Thank you, for Sir. And. There's still a lot of comment, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time to read all of this. So congratulations, sir, for a very wonderful and well-delivered uh, topic this afternoon. Thank you. So, thank you, sir. So, thank you for the trust. Yes. And we hope to have another topic, probably a uh, more detailed uh, discussion next time because we yes, understand sir. that yeah. our time I, is very limited. 
Yes, sir. It's my pleasure, sir. Thank you for the chance also. Yes. And Ingat po kayo. Oh, you have. And very soon, we will be having our CPB and we can organize uh, webinars in longer time. So we hope to invite you once again in the future. Of course, sir. My pleasure. Po. Okay. So before we end, I would like to just read some of the very important announcements. So number one, to earn the certificate of participation, you must fill up with the attendance and evaluation form. The link is posted on our Facebook official page in the POMI YouTube channel. The digital copy of your certificate will be sent on your respective email within 24 hours. So attendance and evaluation will be verified as a requirement before we send your certificate. Paid participants who will not receive their certificate of participation within 24 hours kindly send a message on the official Facebook page of Philippine Institute of the 21st Century Educators or email us at centurieducators21 at gmail.com. Participants who applied for membership, there will be an additional 180 pesos uh, shipping fee if the participant wishes to have an original copy of their certificate. Membership of at least three affiliated organizations will be free of delivery charge and a preferred address. For those who fail to watch it live, you still have the chance to get your certificate of participation. You can still watch the delayed telecast of this webinar. The video will be posted on our Facebook page or here um, in Zoom. You can also sign up with attendance and fill up the evaluation form. So we would like to announce for those who uh, hindi po naka-attend uh, dito sa Zoom, we will re-upload our video on YouTube because uh, we have started our live in the middle of the presentation. So we will, we will re-upload the, the whole video para mm -hmm. kompleto po siya. So thank you so much, sir. And we would like also to thank our participants. We hope to see you on our next events. Uh, God bless everyone, and we hope that we can surpass uh, this challenge and to actually see you face to face in very soon time. So once again, good afternoon and a virtual clap to Sir Leonilo Capolso. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. God bless everyone. Yeah. And also, we would like to invite our participants on the upcoming virtual conference. We have an international conference on educational mentoring and coaching the key to continuous professional development. So this is, uh, this will take uh, place on November 21, 2020 at 3 p.m. Our speaker is uh, Prakash Chandragiri. He is a principal of Goodwill Activity School, Lakeside, Pokhara, Nepal. That's all for today, and thank you so much once again.